Jason Shadrick. We're at the Winter NAM Show in Anaheim, and we're in the Taylor Lair here, this mostly soundproof, quiet oasis in the Taylor yeah. booth. And we're here with the man himself, Andy Powers. Hey there. And we are going to be talking about not necessarily this particular guitar, but kind of this new magic you've developed behind yeah. <laughs> this guitar, which is which is a bracing system, basically, right? Yeah, okay. essentially. I mean, in one way, you could say it's as simple as, that's eh, a different bracing pattern. Mm. But the reality is that it's a practical reconstruction of the way an acoustic guitar works. Okay? What happens is that conventional guitars, we have an inherent compromise between how strong they can be and how flexible they can be. That sounds kind of like an engineer w would say, but what it translates to is rigidity or strength is what contributes to the sustain, the length of note. Think of a Les Paul or a solid body electric guitar. It's really strong. Notes last a long time. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Volume is coming from sound pressure. That means you actually need to move some air. It needs to be flexible in order to do that. That's what gives rise to that conventional guitar maker's wisdom of a great guitar should be built right on the edge of falling apart. Well, yeah, there's some truth to that. But at a certain point, I got frustrated and tired with that inherent compromise. So I, I wanted to build a guitar where those two attributes weren't, it wasn't an either or scenario. I wanted more of both. So I thought of this way to build the guitar where every note could have power, every note could have sustain, everywhere on the fingerboard. Mm -hmm. Every single note would be working well. Yeah, and even just as you were kind of, we were getting set up and plugging, like when you hit a note, it's, you know, it's a decidedly different It's a different experience. Thing, yeah. You play a single note. Yeah, that's not normal. That isn't the way this usually works. Hmm. So I started playing with these things and realized, man, with this level of control, I can control other things. I can control the intonation of the guitar. But now by changing compensation, you know, to account for that string stretching effect, we're actually changing it by, in, by making the whole guitar a better translator of what the strings are actually doing. It's almost like a broadband version of a guitar right. where everything that you play all the harmonic content, the overtones, the influence of the tone woods, everything is like this exaggerated, more expanded version of it. Mm -hmm. We end up with chords that will hit us as if they're perfectly in tune. Mm. You know, it's not done with any funny stretch tuning or anything like that. These are the notes we've already, we've played with these for, you know, hundreds of years now, mm -hmm. or at least 150 years since equal temperament tuning exists. But what happens is usually guitars don't replicate them very well. Yeah. Uh -huh. So now I could play even basic triads high on a fingerboard, like up here in dangerous territory. And those chords will ring out perfectly true with no beating, with volume and responsiveness and sustain. So what you're kind of, and forgive me if I'm misunderstanding, even stuff like intonation you can trace all this back to the bracing not yeah. not the fret work not the scale length totally. not the tuning pegs or anything on the bridge you're tracing this all back to the bracing yeah it okay. seems it's a hard one for a lot of guitar players to oh, understand yeah. because it's kind of like taking two puzzle pieces that aren't supposed to fit together and going yeah. yes actually they do in a big and they make a big picture because i would think well if i have a guitar that's not intonating properly i'd be looking at the yeah. bridge or the nut or totally. something but and there that's an element of it but what happens in the guitar world is we look at intonation and automatically equate it to the word compensation okay that's an incomplete thought the word intonation means state of intuneness it's how accurate is your pitch so really what that equation would be if you wrote it out is intonation equals compensation plus harmony Think of what intonation is to a singer, yeah. to a violin player, to a flute player, to a saxophone player. It doesn't matter if it's until there's something with it. You know? It has nothing. None of those have to do with string compensation. No. Those are the degree of pitch accuracy. What happens here is the guitar's role in life is to act as a translator. It's supposed to translate what we play mm -hmm. on strings into audible language. Most of the time, it's not a very good translator. Yeah. It's going to give you the closest thing it's got. 
which usually isn't that close. What happens here is this guitar is a translator that has total fluency. So everything that the string is doing gets replicated. So all the harmonics, the overtones, all of the richness that would be there is. Yeah, yeah. I, as an example, let's try this. Most people will see people play harmonics. Okay, 12th, 7th, great. That's about, that's about as far as you can sneak out on acoustic guitar most of the time. These, yeah, keep going. All that stuff is supposed to be there, but usually it gets masked usually by... Usually way more difficult to play, too. It, usually it gets masked by the guitar's own irregular movement. So we have this guitar that's moving in a real predictable, real orderly way that ends up being a more responsive thing because of it. So tell me about the time you're in your, your shop, you've got the first one with this new bracing system, and you're like, okay, maybe... Maybe I'm not hearing what I think I'm hearing. You go, you grab another tailor off the shelf, and you A-B him. What was that, that process like when you realized that this was... It's painful to go backwards. <laughs> you, get, you get used to this and go, oh, man, I don't want to give that up. That's, even now, I, mean, I listen to these chords and play, and, and I, I can hardly stop because you start to realize as a player, there are things that you have worked around, whether you know it or not, and once those barriers are taken away... Wait, it opens up entirely new worlds. Mm. You start voicing chords in a different way. Mm. You can play the same open position strumming like cowboy chords that you've played. And all of a sudden, those ones are in tune to a level that you haven't heard before. <clears throat> like, yeah. So a lot of players, they'll say, oh, I'm just a beginning player. I don't play up high on the fingerboard. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You play those same chords that we played years ago even, mm. still do and still love. And they're just better than they used to be. Yeah. So this new system, uh, how are you guys going to work it into the line, and what's kind of the plan for that? Well, what will happen is we'll start with the, the topper, the kind of the top level of our guitars. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a presentation series. You'll see the 914. You'll see this Builder's Edition, our Koa series. And then as the year goes, you'll see other models. As another year past that, or however long it takes us to make you know, production tools to make more sure. and more of these guitars, you'll see this operating system become part of the Taylor guitar. So yeah, it's gonna fall into other models. I don't know the exact dates because man, we're still working on it. Right. But Is this something you're envisioning that there's gonna be one day where just every Taylor guitar just has this system? That's a very real possibility. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. uh, in a lot of ways, it's just a more expressive way to build a guitar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, well Andy, thank you so much again, buddy. Absolutely. This is Jason Shadrick with PremierGuitar.com.